Thank you very much. That's not our slide, but it'll come up. Uh, I am uh, regarded as the geologist. Uh, we're rarely, rarely seen, actually. We spend most of our time underground and away from the eyes of, of the public and just looking at rocks and doing what we're supposed to do. So uh, what we want to do is uh, just run through the history of, of the Kenville a little bit and tell you about Anglo-Swiss and the opportunities are there. Uh, Grant made reference to this, this report. Uh, it came out as just about 300 pages or so, uh, but that was the short report. Uh, there's, uh, it's very difficult to take a property that's 110 years old and, and, and turn it into just a, a, a sort of a reader's digest. And that was kind of what we started with with this first report. And I'll explain what it refers to as we look at the photographs. Uh, so Anglo-Swiss Resources has been operating on this property for uh, a period of time since uh, the mid-80s or so it started to come together and, and become a, a property suite. And uh, as of uh, today and every day, the, the dynamics keep changing and, and Len's out there uh, doing what he has. And they've, they've actually, since this report was written, they've increased the property size four times to what it was. So this is a brand new report just issued. It's already out of date, much like electronics are today. Uh, the foundation is still here. Here telling you what the dynamics are with the material, uh, but the property just getting bigger every day. Uh, so what you have is uh, basically an exploration company uh, based on resources, and the thrust is gold. Uh, the historical uh, production from this mine uh, region uh, has been basically uh, two ounces of gold for every ounce of silver, so a two-for-one ratio. Uh, but no one really talks about the silver, even though there is uh, certainly a significant amount in there. Uh, it's always been a gold play. Uh, the gold, uh, the, the mines put out about two metric tons of gold so far uh, since its history or its inception in 1889. This is sort of the layout, approximate layout of kind of where we are. It's difficult to show on these oblique views, so it's uh, off a little bit, but that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Uh, what you have is uh, the, the uh, white lines uh, on the outside is the new property suite to the extra group of property that was put up. And in the center of that is the, the, the Kenville uh, uh, Crown granted areas that are over here, a series of claims that covers uh, uh, the, the, the core of, of where the, the old mining operations were. On the bottom over here, this blue line is the located mineral claim uh, that goes right to the river. This is the old mine site down here. The current mine site is over here at the end of this green line. And this, this green line, you'll see one other photo showing it, is the trace of the 257 uh, mine. And uh, as I said, this report only deals with the 257. So um, the, the ground surface that's covered by the 257 is only about, uh, at current uh, rate, about 1% of the property suite uh, here. So you can see there's an awful lot more to find and explore. And uh, the propensity for other mines on this property suite is still very, very large and uh, certainly very exciting. One thing that you have to, this is just sort of a, a little bit of a twist over here. The city of Nelson is just off to the side over here, and it's only five miles away, which is one of the benefits of, of this mining operation. Why it's so exciting? Because you have your property that's located within an area that has a resource or infrastructure where you have people, manpower, whatever you need. You need a part, you can fly it in from Vancouver that day. You can drive it in from Calgary. Uh, if you want to go to Subway for lunch or A&W, you just drive down and do it. You're not in the, the jungles of Bolivia or somewhere in the, you know, where it's miles and miles from some place. The infrastructure is right there. The mine has been uh, a mine since 1888, and uh, it still has all its um, infrastructure in place. And what we've done over the last couple of years is develop that into an area where we're ready to a mine-ready condition. The other exciting part of it is if you take a look at the regional history of the property, uh, the, the region itself has something called the Silver King Shear, which runs right through the property over here. The Silver King Mine was to the north over here, or to the, to, the, to the south of us, and produced fantastic numbers. Uh, in the report, if you have a chance to take a look at it on CEDAR, uh, just go to the history section, you'll see some of the reserve uh, or the resource numbers that came out of there. The assays on some of the claims are, you know, just fantastic numbers uh, in the range of 5,000 ounce per ton silver, uh, you know, multi uh, ounce uh, gold values, uh, 70 ounce gold. Uh, they're hitting that. Uh, we even found that in one of our, our assays uh, uh, just a, so a couple of months ago. So we have a high range. We can go from from a half an ounce to 70 ounce gold, depending on where you are. So there's certainly good numbers to have. 